last year Simba and all the cats were really good with the tree. Nobody climbed the tree. Nobody had any problems with the tree. This year Simba just wants to smash his face in it. Stella, Splash, Simba, Hydrox, and Boo. The Lucky Ferals. I'm rearranging furniture right now because I'm making room for the Christmas tree. And there's been so many changes since last year that I really have to like shuffle a lot of things around the house. Like take it from one room, go to another room, take something from that room. Like I'm, I'm basically just rearranging a lot of stuff so that it works better. Okay, so Simba's feeling better, by the way. He just lunged at Boo, and then Boo ran in the hallway. I think maybe they're playing, maybe they're not playing. And I think what was going on with Simba was that he had to go to the bathroom, but the litter boxes were dirty because I had not scooped the litter yet. And I know I skipped a day yesterday um, because I got back really late and I didn't have any time. And um, I needed to scoop them today, and I did not realize how full they were. They need to be completely um, cleaned out. Normally, I completely clean out all the litter boxes like the first weekend of the month, or as close to it as possible. So they all need to be like scrubbed, and they all need brand new litter. And um, I think what was going on is that Simba needed to use one, and he wasn't happy with the conditions of them. Um, so after I scooped them, then Simba used one right away, and then he seems to be more back to his normal self. So right now, Splash was hanging out in the cardboard cat house. Right now, the cardboard cat house is where the Christmas tree will be. It's just hanging out there um, until the tree arrives. It should arrive tomorrow. And there's Stella. She's checking it out. And um, so there's Stella. There's Splash. Here's Simba. Simba's looking at Boo. And here's Boo. And um, this room right now is kind of torn apart as I'm getting things into place. Still trying to get something that was in the house. Right now they're probably waiting for crunchies. The cats are eating on their little Christmas crunchy plates. And it's so cute. I could hardly stand it. Boo's eating on his little plate with the crunchy container on it. it. has like a mason jar that looks like a crunchy container. Stella's eating on her little crunchy plate that has a truck on it because she loves trucks. Simba's eating on the crunchy plate with the red bird and Splash has a crunchy plate with a deer or a reindeer. These plates are so cute. Simba's appetite is very good also. And the fact that he did not want to use a litter box because they were dirty also explains why he really wasn't eating his dinner because he knew if he ate it, he might have to use the litter box. When I uh, gave them the crunchies, I'm the one who spilled them on the rug. Splash did not spill them, I spilled them. I really like these little plates. I feel like they're just such a great size. So the cats are on their third round of crunchies because these plates hold less crunchies than the other plates do. And I love how these plates sound. They sound like little bells. It is 11.30 a.m. We all slept in today. And right now, the cats are having their brunch. So they're having the homemade raw food with the primal raw rabbit nuggets and some crunchies on top. See, there's just a very little bit of crunchies on top and that was basically used as a bribe to get Boo to come down and eat. So, eat your food, Boo. Simba 
should be sharing the platter with Boo. Right now it's basically like platter partners. So Stella and Splash are platter partners and Simba and Boo should be platter partners. And Simba wants to eat here, but he's a little bit, you know, wary of Boo. So I might have to get a few more crunchies to bribe Simba closer, but if not, then he'll just eat second. So right now they're both eating some crunchies on either side of the platter. Meanwhile, Stella is enjoying a whole platter to herself. For some reason, Splash is not eating. He's just like hanging back. And for some reason, Simba does not want to eat with Splash and Stella. He feels that he should be eating on this other platter with Boo, but he's not comfortable doing that because he's afraid Boo's going to smack him. because otherwise he could easily go over to the platter with Stella and eat over there. Stella has not been smacking Simba like at mealtime or anything. So there's really no reason for him to be avoiding that platter other than the fact that I think he really wants to eat with Boo. Simba wants to be friends with Boo. Like even now, like he's trying to approach the platter. Maybe I'll move the platter over toward him. So these two cats, they want to be friends. They're just working out like how to interact with each other. And I think it's actually getting better because it hasn't been where like Boo's been jumping on Simba and making him scream. They've been kind of attempting to play with each other, like jumping at each other and stuff at each other, not on each other, which is the difference. See, so now, now Simba's eating off the platter and Boo's like hanging back on the step. Okay, well, they're going to have to figure it out. Meanwhile, Stella is focused on her own meal. She doesn't care what's going on with anyone else. She's just really happy to be eating her meal. And it's very interesting that she went for the homemade raw food instead of the rabbit nuggets. And it looks like Boo and Simba have kind of done the same thing. Simba's going for some of the rabbit now, but Boo is definitely going for the homemade over the rabbit. So Stella pretty much finished her half of the platter and now Splash is going to eat the other half. Simba came running up the stairs a little while ago and I just decided to look downstairs and see what was going on and now Boo is eating food. So that's good. It has been raining all morning and it looks like maybe it will be stopping soon in which case then I'll bring some food out for Hydrox. I think when the weather's bad, it's just better for him to hang out in the shelter and not be out in like the wet and the cold and stuff like that. It's 1.30 p.m. right now and the rain stopped enough for me to put food out for Hydrox. So I've been pureeing up cans of um, the Earthborn Holistic cat food for him. I pureed up like four cans. I just gave him one can. The rest I have in a mason jar and I'm gonna put it in the refrigerator so uh, for his next few meals, I don't have to take the blender out and puree the food again, it's already done. It should stay fine in the refrigerator for a day or two.
It's 2.23 p.m. Splash and Stella have been sleeping together on the ottoman. But they heard the camera, so then Stella, like, got up. The only way that I've been able to film this is because I'm standing on the steps and they can't see, like, my head. Like, they can't see me from the shoulders up because it's blocked by the ceiling. But I'm shooting, like, at an angle. I don't think they could even see the camera because, like, the camera's higher than the ceiling level. Maybe they could. But, like, I physically cannot see them. I could see them on the camera, but I can't see them with my eyes. All I see is a wall. It is 8.18 a.m. And Boo's been sitting on the bed, staring at me. It's mail time. Let's open up some packages. First one we have here is an envelope. Let's see what's in it. This is uh, a Zumbar. I don't know what this is. Should I open the bag? Let's see what this is. It is a frankincense and myrrh aroma stone. How cool. So here's like the aroma stone. And then I guess this is the frankincense and myrrh. Uh, essential oil includes ceramic aroma stone, frankincense and myrrh scent blend vial. Well, there's two of them. It says, fill your home with the mysterious and deep scent of fan favorite frankincense and myrrh. Directions. Dab several droplets on the stone and let the aroma soak in. Add more when you want to amp up the good juju. Then do a little dance. This is really cool. These are so nice. I've never even seen these before, but I can't wait to use them. I love the frankincense and myrrh blend. I love it any time of year, but it's really nice now, like around the holidays. It's just such a classic scent. Thank you so much. And this gift is from Janet Stemper. Thank you so much, Janet. This is such a neat gift and um, I can't wait to use these. And this is a sample pack uh, with some soap and some body wash. This is Lavender Lemon. I've never tried their Lavender Lemon so I look forward to that also. I really love all of their products um, because they're all natural and they don't give me headaches. A lot of products that have like um, artificial scents um, or just like chemical fragrances they give me really bad headaches, but um, anything that's natural usually doesn't do that. So uh, this is so great, thank you. And then they threw in some catalogs. And this uh, is some of their soaps. Oh, this is a nice catalog, I can't wait to look through this. I love this. I absolutely love their laundry soap. I have been using um, their frankincense and myrrh laundry soap, I don't know, maybe like a year now, and it's a small container but it lasts a really long time because you only use a little bit of it. You only use like two or three. You only use like three little capfuls per load and it is so great, I love that. Thank you again, Janet, this was a really nice surprise. Okay, and now we have another box. And I don't know where my box cutter is. I've been uh, moving a bunch of stuff around the house, reorganizing, and I don't know where I reorganized it to, so. Um, Right now, I'm just gonna use scissors until I find it. Well, this is a pretty box. Look at this. Reindeer or deer? Okay, let's see what's in the box. This says LF and the Boo Crew. So nicely packaged. My cat is sad because here it is. Merry Christmas. Everybody except him is having fun. 
It's a cute cat. Kind of looks like Boo. It says, Dear LF and the Cats, I just wanted to send on this small gift to thank you for all the work you do posting these videos. I haven't had the best of year this year, but the cat's adventures and yours too have brightened my days. Hope you and the Boo crew have a great Christmas. Keep up the great work. To LF, Boo, Splash, Stella, Simba, and Hydrox from Smarty Plum. Well, thank you so much, Smarty Plum. Sad to hear that it wasn't the best year for you, but hopefully next year will be a lot better than this year was. What's in here? Look at this. Look at this. It's a little stuffed boo. Look. It looks just like boo. Now boo has a little buddy. Look how cute. I'm going to put this on Boo's daybed. He'll like to hang out with it. When he's not getting along with the other cats, he'll have a little mini Boo. Boo will have a little mini Boo to hang out with. Boo's looking at it from across the room. What do we have here? Oh, it's a mug, and it's a nice big mug, too. Big mugs are great in the winter time because they hold more. Look how nice that is with all the cats on it. Look at all the cats. This one looks like Boo. And this one looks like Simba. It's really cute. Oh, Boo's coming to check it out. Boo says, is that me on the mug? You want to see? Look, Boo, it looks like you on the mug. See it? Okay, Boo. This will be nice for hot chocolate in the winter. Or even for soup. I like having soup in mugs. Thank you so much, Smarty Plum. Simba's looking at Minnie Boo. He's checking it out. He's saying, what is this? It's like a little kitten. <gasps> Simba. Simba, don't be mean to Minnie Boo. Be nice to Minnie Boo. Okay, what do we have here? We have Faith in Nature Grapefruit and Orange Body Wash Energizing. 99% natural origin, no SLS or parabens. Thank you so much because I definitely always look for products that don't have SLS in them because it just tears up the skin on my hands especially. Um, and I notice a huge difference if I don't if I don't use products with sulfates, I use way less moisturizer uh, than if I do use products with sulfates. Like, my hands get so, like, red and chapped from it. But um, this looks so nice. And I love uh, fruit and I love citrus. Oh, my gosh. It smells so good. It smells so good, like, in the morning. This is, like, a total wake up scent like grapefruit and orange thank you so much smarty plum i can't wait to use this and then we have doisy and dam snaps this is snacking chocolate dark chocolate 70 percent cocoa coconut and lacuma i've never heard of that that is so interesting first of all perfect timing because i literally ate the last dark chocolate that was in the house a few days ago Every now and then, especially in the winter time, I'll, I'll get cravings for like dark chocolate. And I had a craving the other day and I found like two pieces of like a lint dark chocolate bar, like really dark chocolate. And that was like the last dark chocolate in the house. But now I have more. So thank you so much. And I've never heard of Lakuma, so I'm really looking forward to uh, trying this. And check out this notebook. Look at all the cats on this notebook. Oh my gosh, it's like all different kinds. So here's black and white, which reminds me of Splash, domestic short hair, tortoise shell. Then here's a Bombay, like here's the Bombay. That looks like Boo, black cat. Um, then we have a Ginger Tom, a Siamese, a Moggy, a Silver Tabby. That looks like Simba. Simba's like a Silver Tabby. 
and um, the Scottish Fold, Siamese, there's a rag doll, a Bengal, and there's all kinds of little mice. So cute. This is adorable. What a cute notebook. Thank you so much. I'm always using notebooks because if I don't write things down, I always forget things. Um, so this will be so nice to use in the coming year. Thank you. And here's a coaster. It says Marvelous Moggies. It looks like the cats. And here we have a placemat to match the coaster. Look how cute. Look at the cute cats on that. That is so nice. It's adorable. Everything here is adorable. And everything matches. Thank you so much, Smarty Plum, for this wonderful bundle of gifts. It was so nice of you to send it. It looks just like Boo. Oh my gosh. Boo. Boo, be nice to Minnie Boo. Be nice to Minnie Boo. Stella likes Minnie Boo, right? Stella, don't be mean. Be nice to Minnie Boo. Okay, I just heard a cough and puke, and this would be it, and it would be Splash. So when I heard it, um, I was in the dining room and I looked and Boo was sitting uh, in the hallway within my vision and Simba was in the cat tower in the living room so I knew it was either Splash or Simba and uh, this is definitely from overeating. This is totally from overeating. I just cleaned up uh, the vomit and um, I decided to throw out the rug for a few reasons. Um, one, it was cheap when I bought it um, and with the cats I actually like buying cheap rugs because then um, if there's an issue, like someone puking, I don't mind throwing it out and uh, getting a new one. It's just easier that way. Um, and also because it was a cheap rug, I have been wanting to replace it lately anyway. Like the uh, edges and the corners of it were coming like unfrayed. And um, when I picked it up, the bottom was also starting to come off. So I just need to like totally clean off this landing now and then I'll be ready to put uh, another rug here. Maybe I'll get another one of those cheap holiday rugs um, like I got for Stella the rug with her truck. Actually I think I have another one somewhere. Coming outside to give Hydrox some food. Look at this. Look. He now walks over to me. Look at this. Hello Hydrox. Hello Hydrox. How are you? Here I'm talking non-stop. You okay? Want food? I just gave Hydrox um, one of the Earthborn Holistic Harbor Harvest cans of food. Yesterday I pureed like four cans of food and I put it in a mason jar in the refrigerator. So then today all I needed to do was portion some out add some warm water and then give it to Hydrox. So what I do is I save a uh, an empty can of cat food. What I do is I save an empty can from the cat food and I kind of portion it off into there. Look at that. He barely ate any. Hopefully he'll come back to that. There are definitely no issues with him having to chew that food. You can see that he had no problem just like lapping it up. So the food is basically just something he needs to drink. He doesn't have to chew it, so there should be no issues with his teeth or anything. And I do put the herbs in there for him. So hopefully that should be helping. I have not seen him drooling since the other day. This is the other rug that I had purchased when I bought the rug with the truck on it for Stella. And uh, it fits good here. So right now, that's what I'll have here. I'll have this cute little holiday rug. I'm thinking I should 
you know, buy more of these when I see them kind of stock up and have extras. I just checked the tag that I just threw away and this rug was $3.99, so yeah. Next time I see rugs, I'm definitely gonna buy some extras. It is 1.51 p.m. right now. I just got home, I was out for a while, and Hydrox was laying in the sun by the house and he was meowing at me. So I gave him some food. I put some of the cat food puree in this paper bowl. I added some warm water to it along with some herbs and he licked about half of it up and then I think he got scared because um, I was doing some stuff uh, on the driveway. I was like um, getting stuff in and out of the car and I think he heard some doors slamming so then he kind of ran off but it's there if he wants it he can come back and eat it. There's a good amount of the breakfast food still in the feeder because what happens is because the feeder is warm it kind of evaporates most of the water from it so like that puree has hardened i should actually just go add some water to it it's about 2 20 p.m right now and i'm getting ready for the christmas tree and this is what i used last year and it worked really well and i'm using it again this year and um so this is the uh, christmas tree stand um, you fill it up with water. This is for a real Christmas tree. I usually get maybe like a six foot tree. I don't want a tree that's like too terribly big. Um, at the same time, I don't want like a three foot tree. So this is held onto the board with these ties. And I'm actually missing a tie. There should be four, but there's only three. And this board... The purpose of this board is to keep the tree from tipping over. That's what this is supposed to do. Now, last year I had a real tree and none of the cats tried to climb the tree. They used to like to lay under the tree. They did not try to climb it and thankfully it never tipped over. Last year was the first year that the cats were inside for Christmas and it was the first year uh, that they were inside with a full-size tree. The year before I had a full-size tree but the cats only stayed downstairs they were still in the process of uh, you know going in and out and it wasn't until December 29th like after Christmas that um, the cats became uh, indoor cats so um, last year was the first year and what I had to do different um, was two things first thing was um, move the Christmas tree in front of this wall because I normally keep the Christmas tree in front of the windows. The problem is that the cat towers are in front of the windows. So if I put the tree in front of the windows, then the cats really can't look out. And then the tree is just like way in their way. Like it's up front and center. They'll probably destroy the ornaments, jump in the tree, who knows. So I've sacrificed putting the tree in front of the window and I've moved the tree in front of the wall. So that was like the first sacrifice. The second sacrifice I made was not using all of my beautiful glass ornaments. I really love the shiny glass Christmas ornaments and with the cats around, I don't want to use those because they'll probably get destroyed. Um, so last year I only used unbreakable ornaments and that worked pretty well. Um, there was only a few ornaments that the cats took off the tree. Um, otherwise, they really pretty much left it alone. I think more than anything, they enjoyed just sitting underneath it. I know Stella did, so she should enjoy it again this year. I just gave Hydrox some more of the pureed cat food because the bowl that I gave him before is completely empty. I put it on a paper plate And the automatic feeder just went off. It dispensed crunchies. There's a bunch of crunchies in the bowl. And uh, yeah, so Hydrax has food. The tree has arrived and it's in the tree stand. There's no water in the stand yet. I still have to uh, unwrap the tree. But Stella has come over to it and smelled it. And Simba is all excited. Simba's like, there's a tree in the house. There's a tree in the house. Simba likes to have a tree in the house. Now, these cats lived outside with trees. 
Some people get very nervous about cats with live trees. But these cats lived outside, in the trees, in the bushes, so um, I'm pretty confident that they've been trained to be safe around trees. <laughs> Simba wants to rub up all against it. So what I am going to do is unwrap the tree and then let the tree just uh, be here for like a day or two without any ornaments on it. That's what I did last year. And I find that's the best thing to do, especially when cats are around. If they're gonna do anything stupid, like jump in the tree, a lot of times they'll do it then, and then they'll learn that they should not be doing it, and then they won't do it when it's decorated. Um, it also gives the tree a chance to kind of, you know, loosen up its branches and adjust to the environment inside the house. I have to say that I love the smell of a fresh tree. It smells so good right now. I just took out my tree skirt and I remembered what my other Christmas sacrifice is. This beautiful tree skirt. This is like a dark aqua tree skirt with like sparkly sequins and I can't put it under the tree like this because with the sequins and the stitching, like the cats would just totally ruin that and potentially even eat the sequins. So last year what I had to do is I had to put it upside down and this side is fine for the cats. They lay on this, there's no problems. But I don't get to see my beautiful sparkly sequin side. And there we have it, the tree has been watered, which is very important when you first bring a tree home because that's when it does all of its drinking. It just had a fresh cut and it's gonna drink a bunch of water. I have to refill that tomorrow. And then I put the tree skirt under here. Look at this, look at this. And I already, I put it as high up close to the tree trunk as I could. And then the good side's down and this is the plain side up. Last year, Simba and all the cats were really good with the tree. Nobody climbed the tree. Nobody had any problems with the tree. This year, Simba just wants to smash his face in it. Do you see what he's doing? He's just smelling and smashing. I don't know what he's smelling like. I hope there's no critters in there. You know, Simba likes to hunt bugs. I hope he's not smelling any bugs. Are you smelling bugs? See, and this is another reason why it's good not to decorate the tree right away. Let the cats just get all this smelling out of their system. If he crawls under the tree and then up the uh, center of it, like that would be horrible if it was full of ornaments. It would be horrible if it wasn't full of ornaments, but it would be more horrible if it was full of ornaments. Are you done? He's gonna smell every branch. Simba says, I have to smell every single branch to approve of the tree. I mean, the aroma is really strong. I always feel like it clears out my sinuses. And as I say that, you know, I'm wondering if the native oils in the tree have any health benefits like because I know that there's essential oils from like pine and fir trees I believe this is a Douglas fir or a Fraser fir I'm not sure actually maybe it'll say it on the receipt when I find it but I'm wondering if there's any beneficial effects from the aromas of the tree and I'm watching Simba because if he starts eating anything he's not supposed to eat anything I'm in the other room, trying to get some work done on my computer. 
and I heard like a cat conflict. And I didn't know what it was. So I looked and Splash is hanging out under the Christmas tree. He's smelling it also. It's now been about two years since these cats moved inside. So it's like a little bit less than two years. It's like a year and 11 months. And they've now spent more of their life inside than outside. Like they spent the first less than a year of their life outside, let's say nine or 10 months. And they've been inside ever since. So, so Stella's been inside for almost two years also. And that means that she has spent more than half of her life inside now. Let's say Stella was like a year and a half when she moved inside. And she's been inside for almost two years. So she's been living inside longer than she's been living outside. And Boo has been living inside for a year and two months, almost three, almost a year and three months. So Boo's still lived outside longer than he's been living inside, but soon he will reach the halfway mark. And then soon, He'll be an indoor cat longer than he's been an outdoor cat. So assuming Boo is the same age as Stella, and assuming Stella came inside when she was a year and a half, let's say, or a year and a half old, then Stella has been inside. So then Stella would be like three and a half years old right now. And if Boo's been inside for, let's say, a year and three months, he lived outside for two years and three months. I don't know if that math is right because I'm doing that math while I'm trying to see what Splash is doing and also watching Boo and Simba. I don't want them to drink the water that's around the bottom of the tree. And I think they have enough common sense not to eat the branches. Thank you for watching this Lucky Ferals video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe if you'd like me to post more videos and please make sure to check out these other videos that were selected especially for you.